Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I've learned as I've grown into the person that I am today. And um, I'm gonna do a different kind of video on here today. You know, I usually read meditations and uh, kind of talk through them and what I take from that and all that. But um, I have shared on this channel and I have shared at length on my vlog about the passing of my friend. Um, Alex had a very close friend that passed and then I had one right after that that passed away. A friend that I've known for quite some time. And um, he's not really, hadn't really been in my life recently. Um, but he was somebody that was very, very close friends with my ex. And spent many, many years with him. And he would come and visit us. And my last video, I think, was all about that. But I wanted to kind of do a follow-up video to that. Because I went with two of my friends, a couple that I've been friends with for almost 20 years. And um, that were very close with him as well. And... We went and afterwards, we went to the funeral, and then afterwards we went to eat at Waffle House, which is where we used to all go and hang out, and they were like, let's go there, you know, for, go down memory lane, and I actually named my vlog today memory lane, because um, I drove into the town, and I'm like, oh my god, they have this now, and they have that. So, it was um, bittersweet, you know, and it's weird, like, as I get older, I find myself kind of turning into my father a little bit. You know, my father has been somebody always that has just suited up and showed up and done things. And I can remember him when I, he was my age, like having fraternity brothers that would pass away or whatever, you know? And it was kind of surreal for me yesterday. I was like, I'm now like at my father's age when my father was doing things like this, you know? And um, I just, it, it's sad as you get older and you start losing contemporaries of yours. But that's kind of the lesson that goes along with what I wanted to share today because um, in the conversation that we had last night, I got a really profound message, an aha moment from my close friend when she and I were talking. And it was something that I already knew. It was a lesson I had already learned in my life. It was something that I try to live with intention every day. Um, you know, but it was on a deeper level, I think I was reminded. And, and it, maybe that's what it is. Maybe, you know, I need reminders in my life of things that I forget from time to time or to maybe be more conscious of it, the, of, of deeper meaning lessons, I think. <clears throat> so I drove down there, picked them up, and then we went to um, the, uh, the viewing and celebration of life. And um, it was just really sad, you know? Like, he had been in an assisted living program for several years, and there weren't a lot of people at the viewing or any of it. Um, I mean, in all honesty, there were like 10 people there, and all of them were family except for us. It was really sad. And I thought about all the people that he knew through the years, and the reality is that the last part of his life was pretty much dedicated to using, uh, and those were the people that he was hanging out with at that time. And, uh, you know, it's sad because I think that when you're in your own addiction, you're selfish a lot of times. I mean, I know I was. And you're self-centered. And so you don't really think a lot about other people. Definitely not their passings or what they meant to you. Or if you do, you come usually show up to funerals. Like, this is kind of a joke within, like, rooms of recovery. We, that, you know, we're, like, we always make funerals about us. Like, when we're in active addiction, you know. And as you grow and you get sober, you know, whatever, you realize that it's more about being of service and being there for somebody else, not being about you. And um, so it was surprising to me, though, that actually, especially because he lives in a small town, that there weren't a lot of people there that he was friends with. He was friends with people, like, from very young all the way through the majority of his life. So anyway, um, you know, we were sitting there, and then we afterwards we went to go eat, at, like I said, at the Waffle House. And um, we were sitting there, and it was interesting, my friend's response. She said... I said, how are you doing? And she said, and this is a couple that I'm friends with. They've been together and married for a long time. And she said, um, I'm, ang I'm really angry at him right now. And I said, okay. And I said, that's normal. And she goes, I'm really angry at him because this didn't have to be how it turned out. And I said, you know, I kind of like, I feel that on a really deep level. And this was the thing. And I, I talked about this on my video the other day and I talked about it in my vlog, but my friend passed away, um, from long-term effects of opioid use. And the thing that's really scary about this is, you know, I've been sober for 24 and a half years. And um, using, you know, for 10 years before that. And uh, I have worked around treatment programs. And I've known a lot of people in and out of the rooms of recovery that have addiction issues. And um, I think, you know, it's fair to say that at this point, like in my life, I'm a, I've been exposed to a lot of addiction. I mean, a lot, okay? And, and recovery and success as well. But I've been exposed to a lot of addiction in my life. Family, friends, strangers that I don't know, people that come in and out. I mean, I've seen it all, you know? And um, 
The thing is, is that I, I've seen a lot of people and heard of a lot of people that have overdosed as a result of opioid use. And this is why I take this stuff really, really seriously. Um, I, I've heard of a lot of people, I've heard of a lot of people that have taken their lives. Um, you know, and on and on and on. I've seen a lot of those things, but I've never seen anybody that have, unless they are way, way, way like elderly years that has passed from, and I, I don't even know that I can consciously think of one person right now, um, that has passed away at 40 or younger from, uh, long-term effects of opioids. And my friend's, uh, liver and kidneys shut down as a result of his opioid use. You know, and I think about that and... So that kind of bleeds into what we were talking about at dinner last night because I was sitting there with my friend and I was like, you know, um, well, what are you angry about? She's like, you know, I'm just angry because like he could have done so much with his life. Like there was so much that he could have done with his life. And so we were talking about that. You know, we were talking about all the things that he was interested in and, you know, and that he really could have done a lot with his life. And then she said, and she looked at me and she said, but you know, you get to choose how you live your life. And this is how he chose to live his life. And this is the life that he wanted. And you know, there is so much truth to that statement in a way that it kind of slapped me in the face that I didn't really like, you know? The fact that she said it, I needed to hear it, right? But I didn't like the fact of knowing that that is so true, that we choose how we live our lives, and that my friend chose to live his life into the ground, you know? And it's interesting because people always ask me about, I don't want to get into the whole conversation today about is addiction a disease or is it not? But, you know, a lot of people ask me about that. And I do believe in the disease concept of addiction. I do. I, I, I absolutely 100% do. And the reason I do is because it is a disease identified by the American Med Medical Association, okay? It's almost kind of ignorant when people say it's not a disease, in all honesty. It's like you would go to, like, I don't know, the Mayo Clinic and say to them, like, cancer is not a disease. Like, it's almost kind of, like, on that level, honestly. And if you talk to any doctor, trust me. But, so... But, you know, in that discussion, it's like, well, but other d diseases, this and that. Okay, so addiction does have medicine. It does. Like, me going to meetings or if I got, you know, help through group counseling or individual counseling or spiritual belief systems or whatever, there are solutions, okay? There is medicine to helping you. There is even actual medicine medicine today. I mean, we have maintenance drugs like Suboxone out there, you know, that will help people detox or like, you know, long-term off of drugs and alcohol and things like that. We have a lot for alcohol as well. And I never took those drugs. But, um, you know, I know people that have, and I know people that have been on them for a long times and have been successful. So we have all kinds of ways today. So when you have a disease and you have these solutions and you do have a choice, especially if that person, now, if this is a person that has literally never been introduced to a 12 step program, to any kind of spiritual belief, to any kind of maintenance drug, has never gone to group therapy, has never been to individual therapy, has no idea that recovery or not using out there exists and to expect them to just cold turkey, stop on their own. No, like, okay, that person, I grant that they are taken by the disease and they don't have an option in that. But when you have had moments of serenity and uh, sobriety and you have had periods of where you're not using and, you know, then you, and this is all just my personal, you know, belief systems, but if you have periods where you haven't used or you've been introduced to a treatment option or you've been introduced to counseling or you've been introduced to 12-step programs or to church or whatever spiritual belief you believe in that helps you with that, then no, like it is your choice at that point because, you know, you have, you have, it's like somebody, listen, it's like somebody having, you know, uh, diabetes and saying, I'm not going to take insulin. I'm just not going to. Well, then there's going to be things that happen with that. You know what I mean? Like it's very similar to that. And for addicts and alcoholics, it's relapse. It's your organs shutting down. It's overdosing. And that's the sad truth. That's the reality. But we do have options for what we can do, you know? So for me, it's just not good enough when people say to me, well, they, they just couldn't do anything about it. You know, like, um, they're an addict or an alcoholic or whatever. Well, so am I. And I know what my choices are today, you know? And that's why I think it's really, really important with alcoholics and addicts to set boundaries and limits and to say, this is my boundary right here. And I love you enough to give you some tough love and to, to be strict with this, right? But... The resounding, and I went way off on a tangent that I didn't expect to, but the resounding lesson that I heard last night is that addict or alcoholic or not, okay? Somebody that doesn't even have those issues, whatever, whoever you are, each of us 
has the choice to live our lives exactly how we want to, for better or for worse. Every single day we get up, we have a choice in how we live our lives. We have a choice in what we put out there in the world. We have a choice in how, you know, how we look, what we do. We have a choice in all of that, right? We have a choice in that every single day. We have a choice. I'm a believer in that we pick our, you know, unless you have serious mental health issues, I'm a believer that we can pick how we feel too. I am a believer in that. That, you know, like if you're having a bad day, you can start your day over whenever you want. You can choose to be happy. I'm a believer in choosing how I feel today. There are a lot of days that I wake up and I'm just not in a great mood. And I'm like, okay, Peter, this is a day of your life. Are you choosing to exchange it for being negative and being just irritable? No, I don't want to be like that. It's a day, it's, I'm exchanging a day of my life. Do you know how many people out there would fight? for one more day or would fight for their loved ones to have one more day I mean there think about it I'm not willing to exchange a day of my life for negativity and irritability and all that kind of stuff we choose how we live our lives day to day hour to hour in the careers that we do in who we choose to be with we choose how we live our lives I had to stop the camera Pee, -pee was coughing um, but you know when we look back on our life or whenever we stop to look back on our life, whether you're at 20 or 30 or 40, the life that we have lived up to that point is a result of the choices that we have made. Even if it's things that have happened to us or around us, our response or reaction to that is our choice. Going forward, looking at what we want from our lives going forward today, what do you want for the rest of your life? That's your choice. It's my choice all of our choices. We're the ones that dictate that. And when things that happen, when things happen to us that we feel like are out of our control or we have no decision making in that whatsoever, we do have a decision in how we respond or how we react to that. And whether we choose to react or respond, you know, and there is a difference. I've talked a lot about that on here. And I needed to hear that from my friend yesterday. And you know, I drove home and I was listening to a lot of music yesterday and I thought about that. I thought about uh, just how much we just let go, or I just let go, you know, day to day, that I don't realize that every day that I wake up is another day that I have an opportunity for growth, and is another day that I can be the best the version of myself that I can be, that I can have the most exciting, amazing life of my, yeah, I love my life. I have an absolutely amazing life. I was talking to a friend of mine earlier today on the phone, and we got in and we were talking about some kind of just like funny stuff, and I stopped her for a second, and I said, hey, hey, listen, I, I need to tell you something, and she said, okay, and I said, because y'all think I don't complain, I complain, <laughs> I, can, I can vent to my friends. And I said to her, and I said, before we start talking about all this stuff, I said, I need to tell you something, and she said, what? And I said, in the future, if I ever complain about my life or whatever, you know, and I'm going on and I'm saying this or I'm saying that, stop me and say, do you remember the day, Peter, that you told me you have such an amazing life? And I do. And I am so grateful for my life every day that I wake up. And um, I, I need to live with that gratitude, not just every day, but every moment. And I need to carry that with me in everything that I do. I love you guys. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.